this video we're going to be taking a look at a different type of biobe. This one is the Biobe Tube 35, so that's 35 litres. And 35 litres for you guys in the US is just over 9 US gallons. This one basically uses exactly the same filtration method as every other biorb. And as you know, I'm not a big fan of that particular method, but it can very, very easily be made into an exceptionally efficient under gravel filter. Okay, so this is the biorb set up as the manufacturer recommends. I'll explain how they say it should work. Um, and also explain why it doesn't work, how they say it does. Uh, I'll go on to tell you why this media that they use is totally unsuitable for any fish in this particular situation. Uh, and then go on to show you how it can be improved vastly. First of all though, I'll just mention the LED light. That's a huge improvement over the old halogen ones. The old halogen ones didn't last five minutes, they were really weak. This one has, if, well it's got every option you could possibly need, you can dim it right down, you can change the colour, you can put it through a rotation so it goes through all different sorts of colours. Now whilst it may at first seem nice to have all these sort of strange colours you can have and you know create loads of different effects in the tank, in reality I can bet that you'll only find use for maybe the white the yellow, if you want like a black water effect, you know, you're setting up like an Asian biotope or a South American one. Or possibly the blue, if you're looking for like a moonlight sort of colour. Red and greens and pinks, you'll just not use them colours. Now the LED light will last a hell of a long time, it's probably going to outlast the tank, you know. The halogen ones didn't last five minutes, so that is a major improvement. What's never been improved since the very first biorb is the filtration and that's what we're here to do today. Right, this is our filter and our filter media. This is often called lava rock. It's actually a ceramic man-made filter media called Alpha Grog. This is the E25 size. They also do a bigger size which is E40. And although I'm kind of going to go on to tell you why it isn't suitable for this situation, this is a really good cheap media for koi filters anywhere where the media is going to be sitting in filth. Because the vast majority of the surface area on this is external. It's exceptionally knobbly. So you do have a really good external surface area. Problem is though, when you have all that in the bottom, Anything that wants to feed on the bottom, you know, any fish that wants to feed on the bottom is going to really struggle to get food out of there. It's pretty sharp stuff and fish really do damage themselves when that is used as a base. So this is an air driven system, so air is pumped in at the bottom. And let's see, I'll just take that off, there you go. So air is pumped into the air stone here bubbles rise up the tube and the water flow kind of goes around the tank. The huge problem with this particular system is that there's so many gaps between this media the water simply takes the easiest route which is just straight down here. So the vast majority of this media is doing nothing it's just sitting there static collecting muck and not actually aiding towards the filtration of the tank. You do have some mechanical filtration, this is the provision for that, and in there you've got a little removable cartridge with a piece of sponge in. The sponge does have a biological sort of effect, not really much compared to the media though. The vast majority of your bacteria is going to be living on this stuff. And when it comes time to change this or clean it out, we simply undo that, take the sponge out, squeeze it out put it back in. Underneath there we've got extra space if we want to put some carbon or any sort of chemical media. This particular one hasn't got any of that in. So the water's drawn back down through all the media up through the bottom of this filter. It then goes up the tube, water circulates around here which catches the fine muck and then the water proceeds to come out here along with the bubbles. 
It does provide a nice oxygenated stream of bubbles, as you'll probably know if you've already got one of these particular systems. So we've got a hell of a lot of filter media, which is unsuitable for this task. And because it's so open structured, we've got problems with water flow. We basically need to try and put a system in here, which will encourage the water to go through the vast majority of the media before it goes into the central chamber and is spat out again. And on top of that, we've got the problems that fish are pretty much unable to feed in here. So we want to address that problem as well. And addressing that problem involves removing all of this alpha grog. Oh, actually, whilst I'm removing this, I forgot to mention, this stuff is very hard to clean with a gravel cleaner as well, which you would use for your water changes and also to suck the muck out the bottom. It's so big that your gravel cleaning tube cannot really push into it. We need something that is going to allow us to clean this with a gravel cleaner. And that's because filtration is only part of this particular setup. The maintenance is obviously an important consideration as well. Okay, just for reference, we've got approximately three kilos of the Alpha Grog there. So that's it cleaned out, ready to upgrade. And I'm not sure if the camera's picking this up, but the base naturally falls towards the middle, which is good because anything that's on the very bottom, any fine muck, should naturally gravitate towards the central filter. And in that filter, the muck that ends up in there should get caught in the sponge, which should ensure that you have clean water in the tank. So, in our quest to make a useful under gravel filter in here, we're going to do a few very, very simple changes. And the first change is that we're going to use an 11 by 17 inch block of foam, which is actually two foams put together. And I'll tell you why that is later on. Basically, just going to cut an 11 inch diameter circle out of here, cut around the middle, and then slot that around here. There you go. See, we've got a couple of square sides here. That was the 11 inch side. I've just more or less rounded that off. It doesn't have to be perfect. I've cut that a little bit smaller than the diameter of this, and that can slot over here. You can kind of see where we're going with this. We're basically going to cover this with some sort of gravel. Now you can use ordinary aquarium gravel, but I'm going to show you a couple of much better options. With regard to the central filter, you can leave that in if you want. But I'm going to chuck it away. And I'm going to replace it with quite a thick, fine pad. This is just from an 11 inch by 17 inch fine particle mat from a koi filter which you can pick up for next to nothing you can get dozens of these out of one mat and that goes in there that is going to catch all our fine muck but we did have that space under here so i'm going to put a little bit of carbon in here See if i can find any uh, i don't know where my carbon is Okay, so I've lost the carbon. I'm going to put a carbon pad in here instead. <laughs> That's our little carbon pad. Again, that was an 11 inch by 17 inch one. I'm just going to cut a circle out and put it in here. Like so. Put the fine pad on the top. We don't need that anymore. And then we're going to put that on top. There you go. That's got it locked in nice and tight. So now when our water comes up here, it's going to hit the fine pad. It's then going to come around here through the carbon pad and up with the outflow. So basically we're going to have mechanical, a hell of a lot of biological in there and a little bit of chemical as well. That can now be fitted back in there nice and securely. And it's time to put some sort of gravel into here. Now, because this is quite a big base area, it does need a canny bit of gravel to go in here. 
The gravel ideally wants to be at least half an inch or about 12 to 13 millimeters above this foam. The foam's probably about inch and a quarter or 32 millimeters thick. So we're gonna to need to fill all this in with the gravel. And we're gonna be starting at the top end of the effectiveness scale by using bio gravel. Now it will cost a lot to set up with this. I'll show you exactly how much it'll fit in here. It is quite a lot of media, but with this, there's no reason why you shouldn't get a full cycle, which is zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and zero nitrate. That is due to the fact that this is porous. It's basically the bio home filter media made into a gravel form. So the outsides of it support aerobic bacteria, just like any other gravel or uh, filter media would, but the inside of it supports anaerobic bacteria. It's got a specific structure that will allow for that. It doesn't really matter what the flow through it is. Inside of the media, the flow slows right down. Conditions become anaerobic. That supports bacteria that will consume the nitrate. So you shouldn't need to do as many water changes on this when this thing is fully mature. Okay, so this is our first option, the bio gravel. This is a three kilo bag. We'll see how far that goes. And obviously, if you were setting this up for yourselves in the real world, you would give this media a really good wash before you used it. It might have a little bit of dust on. The dust will just be very fine sand, nothing to worry about, but you want it as clean as possible before it goes in. So that was three kilos. That's another two kilos. And that is pretty much perfect. This is the most expensive option, but it's also by far the best. Five kilos of bio gravel is what you would need to do one of these tube tanks due to the big diameter of the base. Now the orbs, as we've seen in previous videos, do require less media. This one's got a big flat base, so it basically needs as much media as it takes to cover the base and the foams. And we've got a little bit less than two inch around the sides there. Obviously it isn't as deep as two inches for the vast majority of it. But we've got a good half to three quarters of an inch covering the foam. That's all we need. And there's enough to cover that central bit as well. So everything's hidden and everything is really low maintenance now. This is basically a highly effective under gravel filter. But if you weren't bothered about achieving a full cycle, if you were just happy to have zero ammonia and zero nitrite and have something that's really easy to clean out, you could just go with ordinary gravel in here. That would be fine, just aquarium gravel. Or you could go with something better than aquarium gravel. It's kind of a, a midway point between the bio gravel and aquarium gravel. And you might get a full cycle from it, maybe. So ordinary aquarium gravel in here would be a budget option, wouldn't be very good. You'd still get the problem with a high nitrate, but it would make it easy to clean. Our budget but good option would be something like this. It's called aquarium soil, but it's actually very small beads of lava, which is exceptionally smooth. Some bits of this are porous, so they do have a chance of supporting anaerobic bacteria. Obviously nothing on the scale of the bio gravel, which has every piece being really perfectly porous, but this is a good option, especially if you want to put plants in as well. You know, it has a lot of natural minerals that plants need. I really like this. This actually comes in a five kilo bag. I'll put the link to it in the video description because this is a really useful option. There you go. Just like the bio gravel, it provides us with something that's really easy to clean with a gravel cleaner. And because we've left a little bit of space around the outside, you will get a gravel cleaner right down to the bottom of the tank. When you press on the foams, you'll get it sucking muck out of the foams. You've got something you can plant into. Ultimately, you've got a hell of a lot of surface area. 
because there's simply so many pieces of this stuff and some of it is pretty porous. So you've got a really good option there and that stuff is cheap. And if you ask me whether you should use this or ordinary aquarium gravel, I would say 100% use this. It's so much better than ordinary aquarium gravel. So there you go. There's a couple of really, really easy methods of converting a biorb into a highly effective under gravel filter. Now air driven under gravel filters are used in so many shops all around the world. They work and I can't understand why in all the years of manufacturing biorbs they just haven't latched onto that fact. You know, that setup that I showed you right at the start is really ineffective. The fish can't feed on it. Muck collects in the bottom. It basically just ends up poisoning the water with the amount of filth and muck that collects in there that cannot be cleaned out. Um, this is just, oh God, it's so much better, you know? If you have a biorb of any type, convert it to an under gravel filter like this. Oh, <laughs> forgot to mention, a big thanks to Mark who actually dropped this off for me. He lives at Carlisle, which is about, I don't know, 40, 50 miles west of me. And he's on his way to collect this now. I got this done just in time. And when Mark arrives to pick this up, I'll give him the choice of the lava option or the bio gravel. I'm pretty sure he'll go for the bio gravel because it's about five times more expensive and that's the better option. I don't mind doing that because it's really helped me out to include this particular tank in this series and hopefully it'll have helped a lot of you guys out, out there as well watching this. That's what it's all about. I don't mind giving a nation of media away if it helps people. Now it's only when I'm putting this thing away that I remembered that I forgot to tell you why we use the two sponges. That's because buying a big solid block of sponge is often exceptionally expensive. Buying two coarse sponges that fit perfectly together is much less expensive. And if it becomes ridiculously clogged, we simply take that apart and clean each individual part. We can get right into the middle of it where the heavy muck is. And also the reason we've got the sponge so big, and it's not just a little sponge, is because we want to really spread out the, the draw. So when the water is coming up and it's going around the tank, we don't want it just to go straight down and find the easiest route. We want everything pretty well evenly covered and the water to go through all of this, not just through a tiny little bit of sponge, because then would kind of be defeating the object of making an under gravel filter. As I said before, you don't have to use the bio gravel. If you do, there's no reason why you wouldn't get a full cycle. The conditions will be perfect. You can plant into it, etc., etc. If you want to save some money, go with that aquarium soil, which isn't really soil, but it's uh, like the lava rock. That's a really, really good second choice. If you're really pushing budget and you've already got some gravel left over from another project, go with Ordinary Aquarium Gravel. But when this stuff and the bio gravel is available, I wouldn't advise going for Ordinary Gravel. You're basically just kind of wasting the potential of this thing, you know. I might produce a kit for this, I'm not sure. Um, if I do produce a kit for this, it'll be in the video description. As always, any useful links to products or services or previous videos are in the video description and also in the pinned comment if you're watching on a mobile device you might need to click the little arrow key to bring all that up but it will be there for you you know if you found this video useful please share it to anybody who's got a bio orb of any type they will appreciate the information and most importantly the fish that are suffering in a standard set of bio orb will appreciate getting a system like this it's quick and easy to do, super effective, no reason for not doing it. Thanks for watching, see you in the next episode.